Good evening, Mason Nation, and welcome to another weekly edition of Mason Cable News, your leader in on-campus news broadcast. Today is Wednesday, October 8th, and I'm Desmond Jordan. And I'm Gina Jerome. So Gina, did you see Channel 4 News here on campus interviewing some students? Yes, I did. Yeah, Stop the Violence Week is this week, so, so lots of great things it. happening, definitely. So Turn Off the Violence Week kicked off Monday with the White Ribbon Campaign. This week, the Wellness and Alcohol and Violence Education and Services Office, otherwise known as WAVES, sponsored a week to raise awareness and fight against sexual violence. Tonight, there will be a panel discussion entitled Intimate Partner Violence, held in the Johnson Center Gold Room. The panel will be made of professionals who work with those who are abused by their partners. Turn Off the Violence Week concludes with the Goddess Diaries, a benefit performance at the Center for the Arts Theater Space at 7.30 p.m. For more information, visit waves.gmu.edu. to attend an event for Turn Off the Violence oh, Week. Definitely. They still have events going on to like the end of the week, so I'll definitely stop by one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Last night, George Mason ho hosted its Freedom and Learning Forum and in connecting academic success with the university's namesake, George Mason. The dialogue encouraged the campus to interact with President Angel Cabrera at the event to discuss freedom and education at Mason. Featured guest Rosemary Tribble, founder of Fear Freedom, spoke at the event and is a huge inspiration on helping others move from fear to victory. At the beginning of next week, be on the lookout on the Mason Cable Network YouTube page for highlights of the event. Every year, thousands of students around the country have the option to join the National Society of Collegiate Scholars, also known as NSCS, but very few take advantage of it. Our very own Ashley Hill was at the most recent induction ceremony and found out all of the benefits NSCS has to offer. On Sunday, October 5th, selected students of George Mason University were inducted into the prestigious National Society of Collegiate Scholars. A ceremony was held in Dewberry Hall during the afternoon. The hall quickly filled with eager, bright-eyed students watching to receive their pen on stage in front of invited friends and family serving as a symbol of their official induction into the society. NSCS is an honors organization that recognizes and elevates high achievers. I can't even begin to tell you how much I have gained from it. Scholarships and resources and discounts. I have gained leadership opportunities. They offer community service events. It is dedicated to providing service opportunities and giving students the chance to engage in the community as well as earn scholarships. If you are interested in joining, just be on the lookout for the red and gold envelope in your mailbox. Every fall, 10 seats in the Student Senate are reserved for freshmen and transfer students only. The student government of George Mason University advocates the interest of the student body, educates the university community with regard to the state of the institution, and represents the interests of every single student. Starting on Tuesday, September 30th at 12 midnight, elections opened on getconnected.gmu.edu. Election results were announced on Thursday, October 2nd, and all candidates were emailed directly before 12 p.m. The results are posted at the front of the Office of Student Involvement, as well as on the Student Government website. The following elective candidates join the Student Senate on Thursday, October 2nd at 4.30 p.m. in Johnson Center, Room G, for their very first meeting. Congratulations to Sam Carpenter, Gunnar Frazier, Elizabeth Dorian, Nathaniel Pittman, Greg Warren, Sophia Ramsell, Laura Hager, Hunter Durensis, Chelsea Lone, and Ian Canty. Welcome to Student Government. It was great to see how um, the senators now that were elected advertised. I saw things everywhere on campus. And it's really great because most of them are freshmen, yeah. so I love how they're getting involved right when they come to Fresh Mason. Faces, definitely. There should be some new things coming up in the future. So Brian's Grill, located in University Mall, has been a main staple in the George Mason basketball community as far as the majority of students can remember. This past Monday, the restaurant celebrated its 25th anniversary. It's been 25 years here. I'm really excited about it. Uh, Brian's been working very hard over all these years to, uh, to make it work. But uh, especially this past year, has been a tough year uh, with a lot of construction going on at uh, the whole University Shopping Mall. So uh, it's been a lot of work, but uh, definitely worth it in the long run. Since 1989, huh? it's, a lot, it's a long time. It's been a grind. I've seen the university change. Uh, the athletics is going through the roof, uh, especially the final four round. And it's brought a 
want the students, the size of the university the students have come out and become part of the community. And we're just really excited to uh, continue to serve the Mason community, have it be a great spot for students to come, get ready for the uh, George Mason basketball games, and uh, you know, any other day, you know, come on in for a, a beer and some, enjoy some good food. We've got a new menu coming out we're really excited about, so uh, a lot of changes are happening. Soon enough we'll have a patio, so we're really excited about that. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for the continued support, we always appreciate it. Tonight, Brian's Girl is having a grand reopening ceremony at 7.30. Upon the near completion of University Mall construction, they will release a new menu as well as a new restaurant relaunch. Well, I'm really excited to attend Brian's Girl. Their food looks so tasty. It definitely is. I, okay, I'm a little bit I love a good burger. <laughs> <laughs> a native of Wichita, Kansas, Jason Moore played baseball at both Garden City Community College and George Mason University before graduating in 1989 with an undergraduate degree in physical education and health. He received a master's degree in athletic administration from George Mason in 1992 and served as an assistant baseball coach at George Mason from 1990 to 1994. On May 30th, 2006, he was named senior vice president of baseball operations slash general manager for the Kansas City Royals. Less than a month later, on June 8, 2006, he officially became the sixth general manager in franchise history. On August 31, 2009, Moore's contract as general manager of the Royals was extended through 2014. Under Moore, the Royals won 86 games in 2013. Now, this Mason alum and his team, the Kansas City Royals, are en route to the American League Championship Series. Everyone here at George Mason wishes them the best of luck as they will now play the Baltimore Orioles. Mason students filled the stands and endured the rain last night to cheer on the men's soccer team as they faced the University of Virginia. UVA was able to clinch the victory by scoring a corner kick, the only goal scored in the entire game. Although Mason was not victors in this match, the fans were in this special greenout game. The men's team complimented the greenout occasion by wearing shirts pledging to stop the violence of sexual assault and abuse. The team travels to Dayton for the next match this Friday at 7 p.m. For more information on this game and the rest of all of Mason Athletics news, stay tuned for the Mason Cable News Report later on in the show. This past Saturday, George Mason Recreation partnered with the Office of Student Involvement and brought bump ball to the campus of George Mason University. Bump ball is easy enough to understand. It is soccer, but instead each participant is wearing a giant bubble, which as you can see can lead to mighty entertaining collisions. Oh, look at that kick. <laughs> Bump ball intended to promote the Mason Recreation Outdoor Nation Challenge, but after the success of the event, it would not be at all surprising to see it again next year. Speaking of the Outdoor Nation Challenge, um, George Mason University is currently 8th out of 10 schools competing. Oh, cool. So, <laughs> missed our broadcast last week. Well, once again, here is Ashley Wimpy's coverage on how to participate in the contest. I'm Dustin Yates. Uh, I am the student coordinator for the Outdoor Challenge. So the Outdoor Nation Challenge just started uh, this past weekend, the 27th of September, is uh, put on by an organization called Outdoor Nation. We were chosen as part of 10 schools to be part of this challenge to see who the most outdoorsy school is in in the country. So how, would, how do we do this? We do this by signing up uh, on this website the website is oncampuschallenge.org, all one word, all lowercase. If you go there, it's really easy to sign up. You create an account. If you have a Facebook, when you go to the site, there's this big blue button that says, join with Facebook. You click that, you select George Mason, and you select student, and you're good to go. We have some really great opportunities set up uh, through our, our new Outdoor Adventures program. We are planning uh, trips on the weekends where we have some free trips uh, and some trips you have to pay a little bit for but are really awesome. Like uh, we got some whitewater rafting trips, uh, kayaking trips, rock climbing, hiking, backpacking, camping. Uh, it's going to be a great semester of weather trips. Do you make sure you're entered into a drawing? Is that you got to take your selfie of you doing the event and then post it to the site uh, in, with your account and just say, I did this event and uh, you're good to go. Now, what kind of events can you do besides the trips that we have planned? You can do anything by yourself, as long as you're outside, not a traditional team sport, and, you're go and it's 30 minutes. So if you come out and walk around campus uh, for 30 minutes, 
Take your selfie, upload it. We get 10 points and you're in it in for a draw. It's that easy. Just sign up, go outside for 30 minutes and take a selfie. That's really cool. I yeah. love being outside. How yes. about you? Definitely. Now is the perfect time. Like the weather is just right. So I think I will go outside and maybe participate in this challenge in the future. Well, speaking of weather, now we're going to head to a commercial break. But when we come back, we will have our weather forecast as well as the sports report. Thinking of studying abroad? Consider spending a semester at Mason's new campus in Korea. Enjoy a unique experience where you will be taught by main campus faculty and will learn about one of the most important regions in the world. Students pay the same tuition as they do on main campus and housing costs significantly less. Join the Office of Global Strategy each Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. in the Johnson Center Gold Room for an information session or visit masonglobal.gmu.edu to learn more. WGMU Radio and WGMU Radio. Welcome to a special edition of the first Freddie will read. Jonah, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. Appreciate it. I've been Simpson Best, on the phone me. today. We have Drew. How are you doing today, Drew? I mean, you're baseball. Baseball. Kind of what made you uh, decide to write a book about it? You know, it wasn't my idea. You're out in Maryland, right? I am, I am. I used to work with George Mason people that way. Yeah, promote the book as much as possible We're here around campus. Thanks, dude. All right, have a great one. You will read. Good Jonah, day. it was a pleasure having you on the show today. Appreciate it. You're listening to WGMU Radio on WGMURadio.com. So for Columbus Day, we're going to have partly cloudy skies, a high of 74 degrees. So it's going to be a little bit warmer than what you're going to feel over the weekend. Uh, definitely take advantage of that warm weather because soon uh, temperatures are going to be dropping again. So let's go ahead and take a look at that seven-day forecast. Right now we have high pressure in the area, sunny skies. This weekend we're going to have a stationary front moving in. That's going to stall just south of the area. So expect some rain Friday night into Saturday morning and then uh, that'll lead to cloudy conditions. Monday, that sun will poke out, enjoy that warmer weather, and Tuesday and Wednesday, a cold front will move through, bringing rain and some cooler conditions. I'm Nick Stasiak with your weather. Let's take on over to Sydney with sports. Sydney Peterson. Yesterday the big soccer game of the year took place against UVA. Unfortunately the final score was 1-0 with UVA in the lead. However the team played a great game and Stefan Cross dominated the field collecting eight total saves. No matter what the score was the student section was in its usual mood of being high in spirit and attendance. Mason will begin the conference portion of their schedule on Friday October 10th when it travels to day Dayton, Ohio for a 7 p.m. match with the Flyers. The women's soccer team's most recent game against Rhode Island concluded with a tie of 1-1. One one. The women's goalie, Lauren Glue, also did a great job as she collected a total of six saves in the game. After a month of playing away games, the women's soccer team will return to Mason this Friday, October 10th, to start a three-day homestead. The Friday game will be against St. Louis at 7 p.m. Our track and field team hosted the Mason Invitational at the Oatlands Plantation in Leesburg, Virginia on Saturday. Both the women and men's teams did a great job as the women placed first place in a 6K and the men took home second place in an 8K. Next, the teams will travel to Princeton, New Jersey to race in the Princeton Invitational on Saturday, October 18th. The women's volleyball team was defeated by George Washington last Friday night with a score of 3-1. to one. However, the team will be back in action on Friday, October 10th when they play Daytona at 7 p.m. The following Saturday evening, they will play St. Louis in their annual hashtag Dick Pink match. As you can see, Mason has a lot of exciting athletic events coming up this fall, including Mason Madness. The event will be held on Saturday, October 18th at 8 p.m. Don't forget the women and men's basketball season openers will be held on November 14th. The women's team will take on Virginia Tech and the men will take on Cornell. 
and we'll be right back after our final commercial break. George Mason University is home to 20 NCAA sports, but there is an even bigger variety of club sports at Mason that every student can try out and participate in. This past weekend, a plethora of different teams competed across the Mid-Atlantic, representing George Mason University. Yes, the women's soccer team tied one-to-one -one with UMBC. The running team had 17 competitors compete at JMU with the top female finishing in sixth and the top male finishing in 11th. The equestrian team tied for reserve high point team the second best out of all 12 teams. At Goucher College, GMU Ice Hockey lost to Liberty 4-2 and won 5-2 over Tri-City. Club Baseball won 2-1 and 7-5 loss in doubleheader versus York College. In cycling, CJ Coffey finished third in Class B Cross Country, fourth in Class B Short Track at Virginia Tech, and finally, Women's Rugby lost to William & Mary 24-15. But congratulations to all of these club sports participants. And now we will finish the show with our fan favorite tweets of the day. Our first tweet is from GMU Student Media. GMU President at Cabrera on Hell and Rosemary Tribe after the Freedom and Learning Forum. Hashtag Fear to Freedom. Hmm, I'm really excited about that. Okay. Were you able to go to the Freedom and Learning? Oh, I really wish I, I had class. How depressing is I that? I know <laughs> class always gets in the way of things <laughs> I know, all the time. Always. Our second tweet of the day is from at GMUU. Mason has over 1,000 full-time professors. Who's your favorite? Give them a shout out and we'll retreat you. Hashtag Mason Nation. Ooh, uh, who's your favorite professor? I'm not going to put them out Ooh, like, like that. But no, I really do love my professors this <laughs> semester. I'm taking lots of communication courses, yes, so it's hard to kind of choose which one I like the I best. Know, yes, I think Mason has a really good faculty. I'm really glad I picked Mason. <laughs> yeah, me too, definitely. So for this week, we want you to know that we will have um, coverage of Geek Week, so send us your pictures, events at C Mason Cable News and use the hashtag GMU Geek Week. And that's all we have for you today. And a reminder that since Geek Week is this week, just log on to gmu.edu with ha hash Geek Week. <laughs> well, I'm Gina Jerome, and this is Dad Desmond Jordan. <laughs> have a great weekend, Mason Nation. <laughs>